My name is Robert Langer. I'm an institute professor at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Well, what first got me into biomedical research, I uh, actually I got my uh, graduate degree in chemical engineering in 1974, and when I finished, uh, almost all my colleagues actually went into the oil industry uh, uh, because there were so many jobs then in 1974. But I, I really wasn't that excited about it. In fact, I still remember one visit I had to uh, Exxon in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And when I was there, one of the scientists and engineers said to me, they said, you know, if you could just increase the yield of oil by 0.01%, he said, that would be worth billions of dollars. And he said, isn't that wonderful? And I remember thinking to myself as I flew back to Boston that night, I just don't want to do that. And I was very interested in education and I applied for various jobs in education, but nobody wanted to hire me. So then I was also interested in medicine and I, uh, and I applied to different uh, jobs at hospitals and medical schools, but though nobody there hired me, wanted to hire me either. One of the, that, but then one of the people in my laboratory mentioned to me that there was this uh, clinician at, in Boston named Judah Folkman. And he said to me, he said, sometimes he hires unusual people. <laughs> and uh, I don't think it was a compliment to me. And, and he said, you might write him. And so I wrote him. And, uh, and what Dr. Folkman was doing, he was trying to figure out a way to stop blood vessels from growing to tumors. And what he actually asked me to do was to see if I could isolate the very first substance that might stop blood vessels from growing into cancerous tumors. But to do that, not only did I have to isolate the substance, I also had to figure out a, a bioassay that we could use in the body, a way to test this. And the test actually involved putting uh, the material in the body uh, right next to a tumor, but it had to be released. It had to last for at least a month, if not longer, and not cause any harm to the body. And so the only way I could think of to do this was to try to create a polymer that would slowly release the different molecules I was isolating. So that's what I went about doing. And we were fortunate after a period of, well, quite a long period of work, we were actually, I was able to actually uh, develop a, a whole series of slow release polymers that could slowly release medications to the body of molecules almost any size. And actually, we were able to actually eventually isolate the first substance that could stop blood vessels. And I actually say, and this is probably right, that I found over 200 different ways to get this to not work. Uh, but eventually, I found one way to get it work. Now, now uh, what's exciting is that both of those are thriving fields, both the, uh, the idea of having new drugs that can stop blood vessels from growing. You know, it's treating all kinds of cancers and, and new ways of treating blindness, and then the polymers the slow release, control release polymers, they are permitting new treatments for all kinds of cancer and uh, various mental health diseases like schizophrenia and many heart disease, many, many others. So let me take brain cancer as an example. Yeah. Uh, what we did there is we created a polymer, and it's a very special kind of polymer, plastic, that just dissolves layer by layer, uh, and so it doesn't, can't dump the drug out. And also, what's good about it is by changing the chemistry, we can actually make the polymer last anywhere from a day to three years or any time in between. And what happens now in this treatment is like the neurosurgeon would operate on the patient because they're gonna do that anyhow. And then they take out as much of the tumor as they can. But before they close the patient up, what they do is, is they put these little wafers in. Here's, this is an example of one of the wafers. And usually they put seven or eight in right at the site where they operated. And then the idea is the wafer keeps releasing the drug over, say, a month or two. In the meantime, the wafer dissolves completely, so it's not in the brain anymore. And, and the idea is the wafer will deliver the drug locally right to the tumor, killing it. But also, it doesn't get to the rest of the body, where it could cause a lot of side effects. So people are, take, are developing advanced delivery systems, and, and we're working on a lot of these in almost every area of the body. So some are implanted, some are injected. Some you can swallow, some are put in as patches, some are taken as aerosols uh, into the lung. Uh, so, uh, so there's all, all kinds of, of, of different ones exist. It's, it's very exciting. Something like now, I think over 100 million people use, use these different kinds of uh, advanced drug delivery medications around the world. So it's really 
gotten into a very, uh, very uh, growing field that affects and improves the life of, of many, many people. The connecting point between the slow release work we do and the tissue engineering work we do is materials, in particular polymers. In the case of drug delivery, we're using polymers to help deliver drugs to the body. And in tissue engineering, we're using polymers to deliver mammalian cells to the body. Polymers are plastic, and uh, it could be rubbery as well, but, but generally polymers are plastic in nature. And one of the big things that we've spent a lot of time doing is trying to develop what I'll call almost designer plastics, designer polymers, for specific medical applications. Already you can make skin for patients using tissue engineering, and that's actually been approved for burn victims or diabetics with skin ulcers. But some of the things that I hope we'll see in the future are new ways of making spinal cords if people are, you know, have, uh, are paralyzed, new ways of making vocal cords if people can't speak, um, new ways of making organs, even someday making a liver or, or pancreas or heart tissue. There's some of the newer things that people are working on, which would be more exotic, though they're still in, a lot of them are experimental, are could you deliver new genes to patients? Like a, could you deliver DNA? Or uh, could you deliver what's called siRNA? So could you create materials that could deliver safely to cells? So that, that's actually a very exciting area because it could totally revolutionize gene therapy or gene silencing. In, in addition to delivering genes, there's the idea of having a magic bullet. We're actually working on that, where you could make nanoparticles that could go exactly to the cell you want in the body and hopefully no other cell. This is a special microchip, and we can actually put drugs in it and uh, do kind of remote control drug delivery or have what we almost call a pharmacy on a chip. So you could have multiple drugs in different wells and, uh, and trigger release whenever we want to. So this is kind of a, a futuristic system. We're not there yet. You could also put sensors on it uh, so to detect different things in the body. And someday the hope would be that you could combine the sensors with the delivery system to make a really smart delivery system, one that could sense things in the body and then have the sensors tell the chip how much drug to deliver. Yeah. Another example uh, which, which we have actually worked on kind of could mimic what one might have seen on the uh, television show or movie Star Trek, where we actually are working on transdermal systems that you could sort of uh, non-invasively deliver a, dr a drug through the skin by even a large drug, by uh, sort of zapping somebody. And, and we've actually developed uh, systems like that. Uh, so far they're just being used for pain medication, but I believe someday uh, in the future you could actually zap somebody, not unlike they do with Star Trek, and a medication could go in through the skin.